Pledge of attention. Call the meeting to order. Um, have a pledge of allegiance and a moment of silence, if we may, please. We just need to change it. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please bless Councilman Locker. <coughs> Okay, um, I have an acknowledgement. Where's Margie? Where's my? Oh, go ahead. You got it. Please go ahead. Good evening. Uh, my name is Kurt Williams uh, from Salzman Hughes, filling in for Tim Schultes tonight. I was asked to um, make the following announcement regarding executive sessions that were held involving the corresponding sections of the Sunshine Act. On Wednesday, May 10th, 2023 at 6 p.m. and Wednesday, May 17th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m., Council met to discuss matters of personnel and for the purpose of receiving privileged attorney-client information as permitted under the Sunshine Act, Section 708A1 and 5. Thank you. Thank you. I guess next we're at uh, public comment. I'm going to start with uh, online. Our uh, digital experts, please proceed. <laughs> If you're joining us via Zoom, you may unmute yourself if you'd like to address council. We have a cricket. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> With that, um, do we have any public comment for anyone in the room? <clears throat> Please come forward. State your name and address. Robert Bull, P.O. Box 1131, Hanover. I um, wanted to say thank you uh, for the hard work you all do. I know it's a tough job. Um, uh, I did go to the Planning Commission meeting recently, and um, I just wanted to say thank you for the fact that the Planning Commission was patient and thoughtful in listening to people who have concerns with cherry tree four and cherry tree five it was a good discussion and it was i think it had a good benefit overall and i wanted to say thank you for that okay. that would um, fall under mr hagberg's yeah absolutely perusal yes sir and then uh last uh i just want to ask the council members to vote no on change order number six under the uh, Shepherd Myers Dam project. I think there's a lot of questions that have to yet to be uh, answered about how something that costly got so far down the road uh, in such a sizable project. Um, so I'm going to ask you to vote no. This is only 70 something thousand dollars? Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate all your time. Thank you. Do we have any others? Do we have any other others in the room? Would like to comment? All right. If not, I'll, cons I'll call the public comment closed and move to the consent agenda. I'd like to make a motion. Second. Please, sir. Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. Those opposed? Okay, that gets us to the item four, the presentation of the Explore York Grant, Heart of Hanover Tour. Uh, 
Hi, my name is Matthew Jackson, longtime Hanover resident, and I'm joined by uh, a phenomenal pro with Explore York. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Wheat. I am the grant program manager at Explore York. And um, you're probably all aware of the Heart of Hanover Trail that we've collaborated with uh, with Main Street Hanover, um, an idea that germinated actually with the, the Borough Planning Commission I feel so old, I looked at my notes today, I think it was 10 years ago, <laughs> and Barb Rupp was in that meeting and Scott Rowland was uh, kind enough to shepherd that, that project to the Planning Commission, um, which created momentum and energy for us to collaborate with Main Street Hanover to get our first Explore Your Grant, which is uh, paid for out of hotel tax revenues in York County. L2 Brands, which is a Penn Township design company, <clears throat> did the design work for the first phase of, of storyboards. So we have 28 storyboards, total 20 manufactured through the grant, eight done previously by Bruce Reber and, and the Historical Society, the eight storyboards that were on the square uh, in the old gazebo. They're now in storage at the um, the NACE house. The first phase has been successful, we think, and we've gotten a lot of positive comments. And so we decided to go for another grant. And Elizabeth was so gracious to curate me through the process. And we received tentative approval, but we don't have a dance partner. And so tonight we're looking for a dance partner. And uh, we were lucky enough to meet with Margie a few weeks ago and uh, the positive energy that, that, that comes from her encouraged us um, <coughs> to ask Borough Council to be the grant agent. Um, and the grant agent has to be a nonprofit or municipal government in York County. The grant's for $50,000. There's a 25% uh, match, and that's provided by L2 Brands, which has done the awesome uh, design work from its employees, and also a host of um, collaborators, creative collaborators. And Main Street Hanover, is a, a, a shout out to Main Street Hanover for doing a fantastic job marketing um, phase one. And if you're on the square, um, you can see a picture of the Heart of Hanover Trails logo. Also wanted to thank the borough staff uh, for putting the Heart of Hanover Trails on the, the homepage of the website that's really, really appreciated. The whole idea behind this project is to create community, civic pride, and encourage walkability, pedestrian friendliness, and charm. And as we approach the nation's quarter centennial in 2026, we really think that Hanover has a special um, story to tell in the annals of American history and regional culture that we all can be proud of. And we can also tell stories that tell our children and youth that they can be as great as uh, uh, John Luther Long, the author and attorney, or Jacob Wirth, the Underground Railroad conductor, or um, Revolutionary War heroes, veterans of service through all phases of American history. We have incredible stories to tell. We only have money for 20 additional storyboards, 17 to 20. <clears throat> so we will probably go back to you in about a year. Uh, <laughs> so, for more. so Matt, let me so ask, we're, how, we're many, per, how, per, how uh, many storyboards do we have today? We have, we have 28, if you count the eight that Bruce did, and they're, they're currently in storage. So there's so 20. We have, we're showing 20. There's 20 um, on the streets now. And they're all new. They're on it. I also wanted to thank, I think AJ Grimm's here. Is AJ here? If I forgot anybody, if I forgot to thank anybody, please let me know. So, but AJ Grimm at Public Works did a, a, a real bang up job collaborating with us as well <laughs> to install those 20. And after this 20, we're going to go to how many? 37. Yeah, 30. 30, it's about 17 to 20, depending upon the budget. It's about $1,300 to manufacture these. Um, they're done by hotel manufacturing for board. Okay, but you know, but as you know, supply chains, inflation. Well, it could right. be two thousand. Sure. But Elizabeth um, is here 
to show how flexible <laughs> and tolerant Explorer York has been with us. Yeah. And patient. And we're excited about it. Um, like Matt said, when he originally brought the project to us, we um, were looking to use some American Rescue Plan Act funding that we were given um, as the county convention visitors bureau. We distribute that to hospitality partners in your county. So um, Matt was previously under Keystone Oral Histories, which is a great partner. They're super professional, based in Dauphin County. So um, in order for us to use those funds towards this project, we um, sought out a fiscal sponsor. It makes sense to use the borough um, in conjunction with Main Street Hanover. They, um, you know, just for support and marketing. Um, if you guys have any questions about the program itself, I would be happy to answer. Um, so but so what, what are we looking for here, an, an approval? A, a unanimous vote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the funding. Okay, so then you're on the, the thing here is number nine enhancement committee to vote favorably to that. Go ahead. Is there a care? Is there a financial <coughs> commitment by the borough? No. No. At this no. As it as it stands now, um, he Matt has recruited enough in kind matching yeah, dollars right. so okay. that you know, uh, in lieu of a cash match. Yeah, legacy. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Would that be Brings us to uh, finance personnel administration. Um, 5A. Is Jim here? Jim um, is not here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> change order C006, the appraint. Approve the change order in the amount of seventy-seven thousand six hundred dollars. Can I um? Can we re be refreshed on what the original request was? Because I do believe we did reduce that fairly Tom, significantly. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I know it sounds like a lot on a nine million dollar job, but we did reduce and negotiate down the change order considerably. We also, just for your information, Gino. Yanzanelli is online and he is with uh, KC, Tom? Yeah, Gino, KC he's, Construction. He's with KC Construction. So if you have specific questions about anything on the change order, Gino, I saw is on. The, the original was double that. The 77595 was uh, half of the original amount. So about 150. Right. This is our amount. Pardon? This is our amount that we pay out from yeah. the bird, and yeah. the other half was to come and, from uh, them. When Eric wrote this up, uh, his his idea was, you know, this was a burden on the construction company, and it was not really foreseen. So if it was a shared cost for the borough and the construction company, uh, that would be a fair amount. And one of the items in here I just got some recent information on was the uh, valves and the sluice gates for the uh, morning glory. You do. And uh, one of the things was they possibly could have ordered these ahead of time while they waited for the permit. But uh, in talking to the contractor and uh, Gannett on the uh, drawings, it says here that these drawings were from the 1932-1933 uh, drawings, and the contractor show field verified details of what's in that morning glory before he can order anything. They couldn't verify anything until the permit was secured, and they could draw down the dam. Mm -hmm. So that. Uh, wasn't in the details in the beginning. I just found that out earlier this week, so I wanted to pass that along to everyone that they couldn't have ordered the gates and the valves prior to uh, getting the uh, uh, permit. Is that why the vendor would not give a price? Originally, when I read through all the paperwork, it stated that the vendor would not give um, the contractor <clears throat> A holding price. 
Uh, I don't. I've, I've read it. I wasn't involved in that. I, I did not. They, the vendors would not lock pricing. Huh? The vendors would not lock pricing. You're correct. correct. They would correct. not lock pricing. And, 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 and that one, Margie, what was that due to? Because the way things are of today. KC Construction. I'm sorry, darling. Guys, if, if, if I could um, if I could add to that. Um, you're correct. A vendor wouldn't hold price. So we bid this job in March. Um, notice with the original notice to proceed in May, um, there was a holdup because of the permitting. Um, by the time we, you know, the permit was obtained, we were able to get on site, subsequently verify measurement. You know, at that time, then the vendor shut down all orders. Not, not only would they not give price, but they shut down orders. That, so they weren't accepting anything till after the new year. So yeah, so we we weren't aware of the, the new pricing until after new, the new year when they were accepting uh, accepting orders. And it, not necessarily the vendor, but the manufacturer of the sluice gates. Oh, wh while we have you speaking, uh, it, it was commented that the original request was double what it is now. What, what happened to the rest the, of the The original, um, yeah, the original request that I submitted to uh, Gannett Fleming was, um, it was 140, and God forgive me, I don't have in front the original one, 140,000. Gannett came back um, down, we had it down to 135. And then when Eric went through it and had his justifications, then splitting the, those items. It came, I guess, the final number is at seventy-seven thousand. And it, look, it's seventy-seven thousand. Obviously, we're we're taking a, a hit on that, also. Um, so yes, it's seventy-seven now. That's good negotiation. But but the difference between the original, let's say, one forty-ish and seventy-seven, was that other items, or was that is it just this one item? Because I I don't have a list. No, of it. it it, yeah, there's a list. Um, you guys should have it. Um, Eric had it on his letter to the board. I thought it was last month. I have it now. Um, but it it, 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 it it comprised of fuel, diesel fuel. Um, there's a couple different things. Just it's a uh, diesel fuel. Um, the sand for the uh, the embankment drainage for the dam embankment. Uh, the gate valves and sluice gates, um, which we were we were talking there. Um, concrete escalations, uh, including the fuel surcharges, and uh, built-in concrete pricing um, after you know the, that the vendor implemented after a certain date. And, and again, that was because of the delay in the beginning of the job and the and that that was it. Yeah, concrete, sluice gates, fuel, and sand. Do you feel we promised you the job would begin at a certain point and it didn't? That's why you were, I guess, harmed? Is that what you're it, it, it was bid in March with the intent for the notice to proceed in May. Um, yeah. So it's um, then the, the, del the delay to July. And then what happened? It delayed it to July uh, when the uh, permit was obtained. Um, so what happened? We couldn't start releasing material till we got that notice to proceed. And then once we did get that notice to proceed, we further we had further delays because uh you know piping materials at that point started you know started to really be delayed with through the manufacturers and vendors and when you refer to the permit you're referring to the army corps permit the dep permit for a release of construction I, I believe it was the uh both the army corps and dep um and you know tom you can correct me if i'm wrong it's um I believe the DEP permit was held up for the Army Corps permit. Uh, for the cultural resources. Right. The Army Corps. That so, so, so to explain that the, the delay was not on the part of the borough or the contractor. The delay was the fact that out of the 11th hour, yeah. cultural resources came in and said, yo, wait a minute, this is a story. We want this, that. And they negotiated the signage and all. But that delayed Army Corps and DEP cannot release the permit until all the agencies have commented or provided approval and, our, and cultural resources the pennsylvania shippo came in and stopped the issuance of the permit which delayed the process 
so we didn't necessarily act in a way that harmed them, the process. No, but they didn't them. act in any way to delay either. Agreed. No. It, it was out of the control of both is what it is parties. And, uh, uh, and, and as we know, during that time, escalation and inflationary costs hit. Yeah. So. Was, there, was there an actual concern that these permits would not go through? I mean, is no. there, was there that? So we always knew that the permits would always go through. There we, was no doubt that these permits were going to go through. We just didn't know when. Right, but there was no doubt that they were going to go through that would have held right. you back from securing That's anything. That's correct, Carol. Okay, thank you. Meaning, to, to Carol's point, and meaning to execute on For the, him to do his part or whoever's, you Well, know, he just yeah. said that the vendor wasn't for supplying the materials until after January, and if you can't start work, you can't control fuel costs. Well, I understand the fuel costs. But, that's, well, that's not my a, issue. Diesel aspects and all that were expected. Okay. There, so. Well, I have a question about the sand. Uh, you could have uh, placed the sand on site and paid for that in a You port. can't, no. Why? You can't begin construction or any activities until the permits are issued. You so can't you get NTP. Have, so you cannot find a site to put these materials on, have the borough pay in advance. I, what, what would that have? What would that have it's, it's, been? Because you would be out of sequence of construction to the erosion sediment control activities. You, what do you mean? There's a sequence of construction activity right. of what you do. You can't just go place material on a site without having your erosion sediment control place. You can't put it in because you don't have construction access put in. That's called construction, and you don't have a permit to start construction. You can't just start. E Correct. You would have had to permit uh, if you're talking about obtaining a, a, a separate site off site of the dam project. Right. You would have had to permit that site, you know, at least at the very least with the conservation district, um, which takes time. And then also with money, because then we'd be bringing the sand into an alternate site and then, and then we'd have again. to double handle it, reload it into trucks and then bring it to site as needed. So, it, it, you know, that that would have cut came out of cost also. A cost cost more than what we're paying out from this. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I couldn't tell you because I, I don't know where the site would have been. Um, that that never came up, and that was never requested of us. So this change order, so you recognize, is 086 percent of a nine million dollar job. That's all it is, and it's very reasonable out of the control of their control. It's again, no one can do anything until permits are issued. You can't do erosion sediment control. You can't do anything until the permits are issued, which week after week, there were there were some suppliers that wouldn't even give a bid, and they'll say well, it's good for a week, it's good for two weeks, because things were changing so quickly during that time. So I think this is a very reasonable negotiated outcome. Well, I think that the reason I'm so totally confused is that uh, this is more or less um, a county job um, municipal and we have to abide by the rules but on normal contracting well we are abiding I, by the rules no i'm talking about on a general ter term terminology of a contractor going in on a job mm -hmm. okay uh, they normally purchase ahead of time to get those things on site but i'm not talking what we're talking about we're under completely new or different stance. Like my husband is an electrical or was electrical contractor. He could purchase a head and get those things on site and the owner would pay him to store them on site. Now we're talking municipal. We're talking bur well, the, you're the also, rules. You're, are you telling me you're, the you're, reason I'm not understanding this is because you have to abide by a different set of rules. Correct. Than what Does my, your husband have to put erosion sediment control in? Through with. What? Does your husband have to put erosion sediment control in for his projects? Get a permit. And get a permit for that. Uh, yours get have, a. You yours, got permits, but. The difference. It, de it depends if there were excavation issues, Chuck. I mean, that's, you know, it's, it, that's one of those. It depends. I mean, I'm yes. I'm right. sure that they were ordering once the contract was signed, ordering materials and getting things in line right. for it in advance. But they couldn't be placing anything on the site. 
So you're saying that the materials couldn't be purchased? Because no, materials they didn't have a place could be to put them, obviously. So, but they can't move on. No, they had a place to put them because we supplied the place to put them. Well, you can't anything no. here yet. They right? could have been purchased. They just couldn't have been delivered. I mean, Correct. You, you, well, Correct. You, you and, can And we prepay. agreed yeah, we yeah, were going to cover have. their cash mm -hmm. outlay of yeah. materials mm -hmm. that were purchased out of sequence and so on and so forth. I think, you know, this was a $10 million job. They had a more of a, more or less a million dollar fee in it. But and they've got a $75,000 Short. Can I call your attention to something that might change that and, and okay. question of the, the gentleman presenting for them? Um, the reference from Eric here, I guess at this time, it's th this is ch change order six. But uh, to quote him directly, it's saying that the um, uh, at this time, council need only act on change order six to either reimburse as recommended or such other action amount as council collectively deems appropriate. The compensatory change order will be forthcoming once final qualities for all items are completed. So there is another change order right. with a monetary value yeah. already coming at the end of this, correct? I'm missing the gentleman from the contracting company. Yeah, there's um, typically with these uh, civil civil type dam projects, they're unit price. This is a unit price contract, yep. so quantities are you know surveyed monthly, and that's how we bill for them. So there are quantity overages on certain items. So yes, there will be uh, like a it typically customarily there's a final adjusting change order at the end of the project to compensate for quantity overages and quantity underages. I just mentioned that because you made the comment that the size, a $10 million project, it, it's not all the change orders, is my only point. Oh, so well, okay. To your discussion. To President Ricard's point, though, I go back to my point. It was a $10 million contract. They've got a million dollar fee, and I know I'm exaggerating. It's only like 980 or something. And here we have a $78,000 discrepancy. Um, for whatever reasons, I'm sure they're all good, and I've had more than my share of experience in bidding firm fixed price type of contracts, and you're saying there's yet another one to come, I, at best, wouldn't approve this and might look at it again in the future when you gave me, you know, the, the, the final number, but I... That, that, that's how I feel about it. I, no, I, 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 I'm inclined to agree with, with the chairman that till we see the overall perspective of what's the final tally, right. then we know what... You know, if, if you're coming fairly, back to us to say there's a, I don't know, a, a $50,000 credit and this number's 25000 uh, I don't know, then we yeah, maybe it's a different we're, story. we're more on board. But if you're coming to say this is seventy seven thousand or seventy eight thousand, and you're coming back with another buck fifty, on top of that, I mean, I think it's you know um, irresponsible of us, and and I hate to say as stu as stewards of the taxpayer money, because I get tired of hearing that phrase. That's right. But um, you know, it's uh, it, you you bid the job at what you bid the job for. And it appears you've done a very nice job. I was out there with uh, Mr. Maines and company a couple of weeks ago. It looks great. But, you know, that's, that's how I feel about I, I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Um, it, look, guys, I mean, we, we spent this money. You know, we, we paid this money to get the job done. Um, you know, we, we've moved forward with the project. We didn't try to hold anything up until we got something like this resolved. Uh, you know, our main, our main concern is getting the project done, done on time and giving a good job and upholding our reputation. Um, you know, I just, I just ask you guys to consider, I mean, you know, with this is, you know, we're in unprecedented times. This was, bit, you know, we, there was no way we could have foreseen, foreseen these kind of price increases when we bid the project. Um, obviously, you know, at no fault of the, you know, of the borough, no fault of the contract the contractor, there was delays in the permitting process. Um, but you know, we've, you know, I don't think it's, you know, I don't, I don't think it's right that the contractor bear that, that full cost. Well, I can tell you the, 
the and I, and I hate myself when I say this, but the taxpayers of Hanover Borough right. are going to, to are, are seeing some unprecedented costs in all sorts of things that truthfully we've never even heard of before. And you know we're having to I hate suck it up, if you will, on those issues. Um, so we uh, agree. We and can't always we be on the. By, but we can't always on be on the. But, on half the amount. Right, and we're, you know, we're happy to work with our suppliers as best we can, but um, we we we're we're strapped for money right now, quite candidly, and um, I don't know my. Um, if I if I was to make a motion, I would make a motion to um, disapprove this and perhaps reconsider it when we get the next one that I wasn't Scott, aware you do of realize, and consider you do realize it altogether. Yeah. You do realize this money is coming out of enterprise fund and not out of the general fund. But Chuck, it doesn't matter. It's money. To me, money is money, is, whether it's, it's already... grant money or... Whatever, money is money. When is that final change coming? Do we have any type of a date on that? The final, the final change you, that you talk about. It typically comes when the project's done. So right now the substantial completion is uh, scheduled for July, July. And then the final is scheduled for a month thereafter. So it typically comes at the end. Um, that's something possibly you guys can go back and talk to your engineer about, uh, again, at Fleming. Um, they have the numbers thus far. And, you know, I've given them projections of where we'll be at the end um, so they can, you know, the projections of quantity so they can they can better report that back to you. And then that file will be resolved at the very end, correct? It, typically it is. I mean, it can, can it be resolved now? I mean, basically all the major earth moving and, uh, you know, material placement, earth placement, concrete spillways done, the, the major items are complete. I'd, I'd have to go back and look and... And yeah, forgive me, I, you know, I was called for this meeting, you know, just this afternoon, so I don't have all my files with me as I'm not in the office. But the um, I, I believe we're down to just basically lump sum items at, at this point. So all the, the, the quantities that could vary, I believe, are mostly done. And, you know, again, that's something Gannon Fleming can, can go back and verify and, and provide a report to you on. So we should be getting more information from Ganning and Fleming. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm saying that, yes, they can, they can provide that information. Um, and, and I may be speaking out of turn, Tom. I mean, you may have that information from Gannett already. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a motion just to put this all on hold and wait till we see when we get the final act of, of the play um, here or the yeah, story. Yeah. And we weigh all of the factors together and make a decision then. Um, I think, again, you guys have done a nice job. I was out there. We were out there as a council. It looks great. I mean, my, my experience with dam building is uh, one. This would be the one. But um, I think you don't understand it. my opinion would be to go with there, and I would make that motion and you're looking Would for it be a second. Reasonable to get a second on second. that? I have it. Second. Yep. Second. Any yes. further discussion on that? The deferral? Those in favor of the deferral? Aye. 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 What was that? Aye. Chris said aye. Oh, okay, great. Chris, thank you. Any opposed? No. One, Chuck? Any others? Okay, so we stand at, um, Dory, what would that be, one? one. Well, Do we have nine in favor of and one against. Okay, and that's deferral of the decision based on the, the full package. Right. All right, thank you very much. I would caution the contractor. Um, item 5B. Municipal joint bids for the waterborne traffic paint bid. Um, so motion. Okay. Any discussion? I'll second it. Thank you. Those in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carries. Thank you. Water Resources, Shackford Myers Dam. Uh, boat launch, approve the grant agreement with the Fish and Boat Commission and expansion of the parking area, which is, which will require a $50,000 match for next year. I'm assuming that's a 50-50 match. It is. Manager Lewis. All right, thank you. Um, those in favor? Aye. 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 Or, or I should say, uh, I need, I need a, a, a second on that. I, I apologize. So Mr. Second. Mr. I'll second. Mr. Ricard? Yep, second. Any, any discussion? No? Uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Uh, 6A, item 2, the remote controlled tracked slope mower. AJ, what are you going, you know? You'd be able to mow the grass from your phone from home, or what? There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> um, would you give us a very brief ex explanation on that? Sure. So as in the description, it is a slope mower for areas that are deemed too dangerous for personnel to hop on a mower uh, at high grade. Uh, this allows How do we staff do them to stay safe. Uh, right now, they are done by personnel. Uh, I know we've had incidences in the in the nearby area where tractors have flipped on people. We've had close calls and incidents in the past, and this is to try to avoid those in the future, uh, including our new uh, Shepherd Myers Dam. Huh? On that uh, slope mower, do you have an estimate? to give us on what uh, the um, slope mower would cost? Do you have any kind of an idea to give us? We actually have. Tom has that. OK. We have a quote on that. It's uh, 62900 I believe. Okay, it, it was in the budget for this year. OK. Thank you. You're right, so. Um, it is in the budget. It is in the budget. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make the motion. I'll second the motion. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Chris, was that in favor or against? No, I'm in favor. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Number seven, Planning Commission. Mr. Hegberg, do you want to take this on? Uh, basically, um, you know, approval motion for the 230 Wilson Avenue tractor supply. It's a new facility um, being built over on Wilson. Um, it's gone through many, many reviews by the Planning Commission, so it's good to go. Okay. And then uh, 310 Juniper Lane, it's a... Um, Reverse subdivision in land development. It's going to be a, what is that one going to be? It's just a reverse subdivision on it. Okay. Nothing major. All right. Those in, uh, any, a second on that? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Chuck, thank you very much. Um, item eight, public works and facilities, the muni bid auctions. I saw the yeah. okay. thing in here. AJ, you got 60, 69.1 or? Correct. These were the, there were 15 pieces that we asked last month to go ahead and put out for auction. 13 of those 15 pieces sold. Uh, the two that did not sell were a random spare ladder or it's a leftover ladder from broken piece of playground equipment and a uh, very old uh, smaller snow plow. Uh, this was a, again, a great success going through Municipid, which is very popular in Pennsylvania. Much higher of these things you're looking at really for these numbers, we only actually had eight vehicles um, in these numbers. The rest were, you know, smaller equipment. So the 69,000- The bids that we're getting our money's worth? 
Oh my Excuse gosh. me? Well, You're yeah. comfortable yeah. with the amounts yes. we're getting? Yes, far and above. I, I just would question why we seem to have so many merry-go-rounds. <laughs> uh, so those were removed from two different playgrounds. Okay. Uh, they are no longer in compliance. Uh, something that we would have scrapped for a couple bucks. We walk away with $765 uh, for the one and 80 for the other. Okay. I have a question. Where does this money go? To the backhoe. <laughs> Barb's got, got a good question. Where does this money go? Where does it go? It goes to the, it goes to the backhoe that we had in the meeting last week. Or last oh, time. that's right. That's yep. So it covers approximately 46% of the okay. cost of a new backhoe. But it goes so into the general fund. Particular. <laughs> yes, correct. Right. Right. Correct. Thank you. No. Nice. All right. AJ, okay, thank you very much. Um, the vote to approve that. So those, um, I guess we need a second for that. Second. Any questions? Any motion? Okay. Chuck. Okay. Chuck. Yeah. Mr. Hegberg. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Kress, second. Thank you. No questions. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mm -hmm. Misbehaved down at this end. Okay. So thank you. Number nine, enhancement Five committee. Get a motion for the heart of Hanover Trail based on the great presentation from Second. Mr. Mac Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chris, yes? yes he was an aye. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was a mumbled aye. <laughs> Thank you. Matt, Mr. Jackson, you win. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, number 10, library work group. Report from the council participants. Well, we saved the easy part for last. Mm -hmm. Good evening, council. Morgan Madden from Eckert Siemens. Here at the bequest of council, um, and the borough generally to discuss uh, some research on the budget as it pertains to the borough library and where those funds are coming from and where uh, they're going. Uh, so just generally speaking, the library budget uh, line item in your general budget is $988,333, and that's without bond servicing that the borough pays annually. So those are operating costs of the library? Some of it, yes. Yep. And do I just tell you next slide? Next slide, please. <laughs> uh, so operations. Uh, the borough pays $419,443 toward operations, and that is broken down into two uh, categories of payments. First, uh, it's $121,686,000. In fair share payment uh, that's in fair share in terms of the other municipality fair share payments that also uh, go toward the operation of the library and an additional almost three hundred thousand dollars needed on an annual basis to balance the books Next so slide. that's a shortfall of what we don't get from other surrounding municipalities that use the, the facility correct uh, Thank you. As it's projected for the 2023 fiscal year, uh, there'll be a 666,000 bond payment, uh, leaving a remainder of $2.6 million on that bond to be paid before January of 2027. Uh, that breaks down to approximately, if my math's right, although I am a lawyer, somewhere over $800,000 a year. Uh, so then we're talking about the difference. So if you go back to that original number, the almost $1 million figure, less the figures we just talked about, we'll look at the other sources that fund that library. And again, these are projected numbers. These are not numbers that are necessarily received by the borough toward the cost of the library each year. Uh, and the projected number this year total is $568,890, made up of one state grant funding, which does vary a little bit from year to year. Uh, county funding in the amount of almost ninety thousand uh, dollars and then uh, sixteen thousand dollars in operational revenue from the library itself and then five sub municipalities including Penn Township at eighty five thousand dollars Conewago Township at three thousand dollars Mannheim Township at seven thousand dollars West Mannheim Township at eight thousand dollars 
and Southwest School District at $15,000. There's also a almost $200,000 gift uh, bequest donation uh, projected return that'll go up to make up that difference. Um, I do think it's worth noting while we're on these slides uh, that these quote fair share breakdowns are not necessarily based on library usage. Um, and if you go to the next slide, <clears throat> you'll look at the uh, the figures broken down by a uh, per capita figure and also a per household figure. Um, for example, uh, the lowest being in uh, out of the townships, West Mannheim Township, uh, their, their payment towards the library, and again, it's that projected payment, is 86 cents per capita or 243 per household, <coughs> where Hanover is uh, sitting at around $7.38 per capita and $17.15 per household. And again, that is before the bond financing payment of several hundred thousand dollars per year um, coming out of tax dollar payments. Can I make an additional point here? Please. Is that there's municipalities that aren't on here because they don't pay anything. So mm -hmm. Paradise Township is a user. There's nothing there. Um, so, and there's a couple others. Adams so Adams, Adams County, County users. So this, this is, it's actually worse than this on the numbers. And it's my understanding, and I certainly don't wish to be quoted on this, but it's my understanding that despite Hanover's per capita and per household payments, Hanover borough residents do not make up the majority of the users of the facility. That is correct. No, we're about a third. 30%. But they're paying the most. Correct. Right. Next slide, please. That's so obviously word. there's a structural deficit. Um, to, to put it in very simple terms, uh, it's, a, it's a sinking ship that uh, currently is being emptied with a ladle. It's just not, it's not cutting it. It's not a sustainable or feasible model moving forward. Uh, it's projected that there'll need to be an additional $300,000 to balance the books this fiscal year. Um, and over the past 10 years, there've, there's been a $150,000 average deficit on a year-to-year -year basis. Some years that being much lower than 150, some years like this projected year up to 300,000. And once again, that's all before the additional several hundred thousand dollar bond payment that's required. So yes. you're, you're saying it's this year's additional payment is twice that of the last 10 year average. Correct. However, within that past 10 years, I believe there have been some figures around this year's payment, um, but there have also been some far below there. But this year's payment will be that $300,000 plus the $666 six hundred sixty-six dollar Right. This has nothing to do with the building, Correct. The, the bond payment. But I would say that the trend since 2018 or 17 has been the increasing of the opposite direction of the three hundred to 400000 Right. I mean, I think it's to your point and your your presentation and analysis, Chuck, on this was was brilliant. But it's it's important that everybody gets, you know, and on top of the the triple six, we're paying for the 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 debt on the building, which we've got another four or so years on. Um, we're we've got another three hundred thousand, uh, which used to be one hundred and fifty, but the trend line's increasing. So. Thank you. <coughs> Next slide, please. Um, so what does this essentially turn out to be? The, the borough's contribution as it stands now is equal to 1.4 mils of additional tax that's levied specifically to the borough's residents, not those other townships' residents and those other municipalities' re <coughs> residents. Uh, the average home value in your borough is $150,000, and the average household is paying, again, over $17 to support the library. Uh, the per capita income here is just shy of $31,000 for the household, uh, or excuse me, per capita, uh, which means each individual taxpayer is paying just over $7. Next slide, please. Again, this $988,000 figure is the total budget line item, and that's including those projected figures from the other contributing uh, municipalities, which often don't uh, actually contribute what they're projected to contribute. Um, of that almost $1 million line item, 
approximately $750,000 of that is uh, compensation and benefits of the library staff um, and their benefits. Um, and <coughs> leaving under a quarter of the budget to go to uh, capital expenditures, books, um, and the other things that it takes to keep a library running. Uh, infrastructure, technology, et cetera. Next slide, please. So in terms of options and how, how the borough can move forward, um, ideally you would address the majority of the budget. That's typically when you're looking at reducing costs of anything. You look at the overall budget and what costs the most, and that's the first thing you address. And so that, in this case, would mean less employees and or less services. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Ideally, we could equalize the cost uh, per resident across the entire service area, including those townships that maybe don't contribute anything, and getting those townships that do have several re residents using the facility to increase their contributions. Uh, it'll uh, reduce the structural deficit and the borough's uh, annual payment and subsidy of that overall cost. Next slide, please. Um, some things you could do, you can, as a borough, decline to accept the state subsidy. Uh, in turn, um, with that state subsidy, there are certain regulations that the borough has to follow in terms of its operations. Uh, declining those funds uh, removes those obligations, so <coughs> operational costs could be saved there um, because the library then can be operated uh, at different hours, lesser hours, staffed differently. Etc. cetera. Um, this might incentivize those other townships to increase their contribution. Those state subsidies, is there any negotiating for different amounts? That is not something I ever participate in. That's more of a... As far as like do you know more? Yeah. No. no. No, I don't, I don't think. No, I don't. That's, that's a grant amount based on our service area. <clears throat> So other... It's a formula. It is a formula. I so see. it's based on the amount of, of persons that we serve. I see. Yeah, it, it varies, and I, and I believe, I don't know them here as well, something we might want to check on. The, the inclusion of the Adams County component, I believe at one point in time I heard that it is included in that rubric or equation as to how we get to the 156-ish thousand state contribution. So it's... I don't think Adams County is. You don't think so? No, I don't think it is. Okay. I think it's just your county usage, okay. and Adams County gets their usage. Overall point, it's somehow right. service area, right. individuals, demographics. Okay. I think it's also worth noting in terms of uh, whether or not you're taking the state subsidy. If the borough were to decide to decline the state subsidy, there is a strong likelihood that the county funding would also dissipate, if not go away altogether. Um, so something to consider. Next slide, please. Um, other options, you could return the site of the library to the trust uh, and relocate to a smaller, more efficient space. The trust would certainly need to probably be reworked, which is something that our team or whoever could certainly help, help <coughs> do. Um, the cost-effective space, uh, I don't know much about the infrastructure at the building, but certainly there are likely spaces that are more energy efficient, uh, smaller, requiring smaller staffing, smaller cleaning, et cetera, lower uh, next slide, please. Um, obviously, increasing revenues is ideal. Um, you could sublet space within the existing space, um, join the York County Library Group, um, increase fundraising efforts. Uh, you could put the library, create a nonprofit, put the library into that nonprofit. Um, you could induce fees uh, for programming and services. Again, that comes with uh, removing the state funding. Um, and, and increase trust contributions. And again, that would come with reworking the trust as currently structured. Next slide, please. Um, and so essentially what the borough would want to do or think about doing is um, either form a standalone nonprofit or join the York County Library, um, and this all with a projected end date of uh, January 2027. And when I say end date, I mean for this this plan, not the library, of course. Um, look for a more equitable trust funding formula in terms of the different municipality contributions um, or and or equalize funding from the service area municipalities. Next slide, please. In turn, the borough could offer 
a few different things as bargaining chips, essentially, um, continue to pay for the capital expenditures, uh, work to find an equitable rent, uh, continue to maintain the premises except for capital expenditures, um, and or provide legal support for reform of the trust uh, and get a new operating agreement in place. Next slide, please. Um, if these things don't happen, as I said earlier, this, this really is not a sustainable model for the borough as it is currently structured, just in terms of dollars being spent. Uh, my understanding is that this makes up uh, a very significant part of your annual budget. Um, and so some, some uh, alternatives would be for the borough to decline state subsidy in 2024 and change the operations altogether. Um, that could include charging uh, library users, uh, reducing hours, reducing staffing, et cetera. Um, however, if the parties could come to an agreement for around that 2027 time period, um, the borough can probably make the model work until that time to, to get us there, to get us to that finish line. And so based on those things are hard numbers, and I can certainly discuss it further to some extent if you'd like, but... Uh, essentially, um, we would recommend or suggest a motion that the borough adopt the findings and recommendations of the council's library working group that have been reviewed by legal counsel um, and empower the manager to effectuate the findings and recommendations of the working group with respect to the future, future operations of the library. Thank you. Motion to proceed. Is that Gary? Second. <laughs> so Gary made a motion to proceed. Mm -hmm. Chuck made a second. He yeah. he beat you to it, Chuck. Huh? Uh, he was yeah. Uh, he had any further discussion? Yeah. Oh, okay. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Chris. Any opposed? Yeah. No. no. Barb, you're opposed. No. Barb's opposed. Okay. Chris was yes. Well, I'm not opposed to the concept, I'm opposed to the process. Chris was yes, sorry. Okay. Sorry, yes, Chris was yes. Okay, so we have nine, nine in favor, Barb, Barb opposed on the process. All right, thank you. Hence the slide. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Okay. Um, number 11, committee chair reports. Does anyone dare have anything? I do, I do have a question about her PowerPoint, if I may, if I can ask that this time. Will that PowerPoint be presented to the Library Board of Governors as well? Certainly can, yes. Will be? Yes, we can do that. that yeah. I think it's only fair we be transparent with them. Yeah. We did have a meeting today with their, their president, and we, we can certainly do that, yeah. And we can present it. We don't have to have council do that. Right, exactly. Thank you. Okay, so the action is to review that with the library. And, I, and I'm always confused when you say library board, which is it? It's Board of Governors. I, I get confused governors, too. Yeah. Board of Governors. Okay. Which Thank is part you. of the problem. Because <laughs> they don't know either. Yeah. We're, right. That's a good thing we're going to do as far as proceeding. I'm just going to share. Discuss and share with them. Yes. Sure. And maybe the outside mm -hmm. municipalities. I mean, we have to put a whole plan in place. Yes. We need to get a memorandum of understanding together with the, the groups to work toward this positive end for all of us, which results in a library that can stand alone. So that's the goal. Sounds good. Will we be informed as to what that process is as it continues? Yeah. I do think all those people need to sit down at the table. They definitely Rather do. Rather than just go to them one by one, we need to know what their responsibility is. They definitely do. When you, when you say those people, what are you referring to, the municipalities? I mean, municipality, you know, yeah. like a board or whatever. I mean, I think ultimately it's, you're going to have to go meet with each one of the, the supervisors. I think it would be easy if you put them officials. all down together and say, to start this, with is, some this sort is of what our table. problem is, the and you're not the paying whole group share. Here it is. So you around. think doing all of them at once is better than going one-on-one -on -one with the, each I'd kill township? I'd kill one time. I, that's, that's not my call, but I, I would suggest I think a little bit of both, too. <laughs> Maybe both. We could certainly start out with that if we can get people Maybe together at the table. Right. But then, you know, like I had said, go, go to their meetings, go to their budget prep meetings, oh, so, so they know that this is something yeah. that they're responsible for so that their citizens can continue to use the library. But I would give them the bill. I wouldn't say, please give us this. I'd say, this is your bill. This yeah. is your commitment. I agree with Barb 100%. This is it. 
Yeah. Step up. But I think one of the Step up. No library for you. Before we can before we can do that. No library for you. Before we can do that, instead of doing it the fair share approach, yes. there you know because no. you need to have the per capita. Yes. No, it has to be that, right? Yeah. Mm. I think you Chuck, you did a really good job of it, and I think we need to agree on whatever presentation methodology that we're going to take forward to these other municipalities and be consistent and, and move forward with exactly that. Mm -mm. Can, <clears throat> cannot be enforced, so you can put it on the table, but you, can't make, but you can't cannot make them drink from that trough if they don't want to, correct? Correct. Well, and so then it well, leads us to... But I think to presenting it to them all at the same time and saying you use X amount, your, your residents are using it the most, your residents are using it the least, and giving, you know, just being completely transparent in front of everybody. If you're standing there and you're, you're drinking from the well, but you're not contributing, obviously everybody else is going to look over and say, hey. I agree with, I agree with Brian. It, what you are know, you doing? You got to sit them all you down. Hit them all at the same yeah, time. And time. It, it's, yeah. you know, we're not asking for anything unreasonable. This no. is what your, your costs are. This is your bar bill. Can I you, ask like if we went that route before? Did we go to the municipalities no. and townships and mm -hmm. had we presented it as we're speaking of it tonight? Has it been done before? Yes. I'm not aware yeah. it has been done Since before. Yes, it has. Yes, yes, but not effectively. Yes, but not as a group effort from all of us. Mm -hmm. It right. was from the library. <coughs> it was done last by year. somebody, some way, somehow, but not in a strong a sense. Hindsight, do you think it would make a difference? <laughs> really, in the end? I, then we'd be stern in the end. I, I think as I stewards of these, I, I of, of think these that there's a chance tax that, dollars. Yes, I think there's a chance that some numbers may change. Right. The, the, I won't speak of the township, but you know, a couple beers and we talked about it, and then they they got together and they did send money um, because they didn't understand that, and, and they were honest to say that they don't even have a library in their zoning ordinance because nobody. It would be they, they just come to Hanover, so right. they recognize whether or not that will be an annual thing or it was one of those. Oh, we got some ARPA funds. Let's throw some money over. That's what I, I don't know. Um, as as you've pointed out, Darlene, there's there is no requirement under state rules to, that they have to pay anything, and but we have to with the money serve them as part of the service area defined by the state. If, so we, we, if can, we take the buck fifty from the state, right? But we can request or petition the state to change our service area, and I think it's a reasonable plan that that Margie has laid out to say we're giving it a year. Our plan is going in 2027 for them to have a chance to put it into their budget on a per capita of the usage of that library, and I think that that's a fair thing. It's not like we're you know. We're cutting them off tomorrow. Right. We're we're willing to work with them, but at some point we have to be understanding that we can't continue to be spending borough taxpayers' dollars for yeah. services being done outside of you know provided. Twenty five percent of our general fund, essentially. Correct. Is going at, to the at library this, at this point. Yeah. Um, if they choose not to do it then that's between their citizens and their elected officials right. to deal with it, not us. Okay. We're elected for our citizens, and that's why we're trying to find a solution, okay. an amicable solution, but one that, you know, at some point we have to make a decision on. Very I would hope our point. solution yeah. is as, uh, as inclusive as it could be with their support, as opposed to being exclusively saying it's our library and you can't use it. I mean, I would yeah. hope, I mean, as a, as a person who represented students in the Penn Township School District who use, a, use the library pretty heavily and only give $15,000, you know, I would hope that, that there would be a way that, that they could, I think people, if the township is going to give money, they should get a library report every month like we do. They should know what's going on in the library if they're giving their money. And they should yeah. maybe, every, maybe once a year be part of an annual meeting or something well, so they, one feel, of the, they feel like yeah. they're included well, they should have just a giving you money. The, they should well, have a and I have, to, should have a I, I have to say that that was part of a conversation at the working group that as part of the nonprofit, 
the, the municipalities that are supporting the library would have a seat at the table <coughs> as part of the nonprofit. That's good. As part, you know, the governors can set it all up and do whatever they want to do. We're not telling the, our, our goal that we, at, at the meetings that we had, our goal was not to tell the governors and the library operations, because they know how the library runs, what direction to go. Do you want to be a nonprofit or do you want to become part of YCL? We weren't telling them. That's their decision of what's best for that library. We, we, are, we, can, we manage the building. That's, we're, we're a tenant. We're a landlord uh, with it. So we looked at becoming a tenant of it, and it didn't work. But we right now are a landlord of a building that, that we're dealing with. So I hear what you're saying, Barb, and I think that that was one of the things that was brought up to say, hey, nonprofit, you guys are free to go however you want, run the library the way you think you should run it. Right now we're a tenant paying penthouse prices for an efficiency apartment, though. Well, I think we've been quite patient with this whole uh, ordeal, but I probably shouldn't ask this question, but I'm very curious as to how many years have we been in this boat where our people have been paying the majority out of pocket? Uh, does anyone have a general idea of how long we have been doing this? It was quoted on the slide that the average over 15 years, it's been a significant amount. It, yes. thank you. My understanding, it could go longer than that, but the amounts were not part of the study. Yeah. Okay, thank could, you. My understanding was, though, President Ricard is the the formula for how all this is funded, including the state's participation, changed dramatically uh, 15 years or something ago, hmm. or thereabouts, which would have made everybody change their minds with how it's done now. Um, I don't remember exactly what, how, and or we whatever, kept doing but it, it the isn't same like our predecessors way. were stupid, if you will, yeah, yeah. and went into this blind. Yeah. Is the, sort of like the subsidy for the school district. It's changed, right. you know, dramatically all of a sudden. Right, right, right. And I have to admit, the state, state and the county funding reduced. has been, it's reduced, it's dropped. There's been some years it's been significantly lower, which are the years that we've been at the four or 500 red line that we had to balance. Correct. And so, no, one's asked, no one's asked the question, why don't we operate upon that? Instead, we keep operating in the red that, okay, so the state gives us this, but has this unfunded expectation that we continue to operate the library as we always have. Whereas no one's ever really wanted to roll their sleeves up and talk about the unpopular thing, which is you're not giving us enough to do that. So we are, the, par the borough residents are unfairly paying taxes to support Correct. that. So right. that's all this is. In Essex State, they addict you to some subsidy thing and then say, oop. Right, oh, right. No. So there are, there are so many <laughs> permutations, iterations of, of concepts and getting outside the box of, of what can happen here with the library. This is a first step, I think, that opens the door to the conversation I, to engage people to, to want to be involved to create a sustainable library model which again it's we've hit upon 20 in our conversation well and I, and I think it's important for everyone to know including the sense I mean we're still investing in the library we just spent yeah, nearly a million dollars on putting the new roof, roof over top of it to stop the water going in yeah. um, we are funding somebody or a company to be fundraising for it to continue to try to bring in and adjust the revenues for it, go after grants and everything else associated with it. The timeline of discussion, I mean, we're talking 2027, You're right. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a, there's a long runway to work this. This isn't like, oh, by the way, our new budget starts January 1. And yeah. we're not inconsistent by any means, No, to your point. We're trying to come to a sustainable approach. Okay. Um, on the um, entity that to do the is fundraising, put into, yeah, for funding. the borough. The borough is paying. How much are we paying? Do you know? I do not. We don't have a. We don't have the group. A proposal. A proposal. We have no proposal, and we don't have anyone in the position right now. Okay. Thank you. All right. So on. I, 
I think that finishes the library. I think um, correspondence and information. I have something really important here um, from the fire chief. Council members wanting to ride the ladder truck in the Memorial Day parade should report to Carlisle and Gale Street by 8 o'clock Monday morning, 529. Um, they can, they're welcome to be at the, they can park in the, the building, the parking lot there at the Young Manor of our building and um, I'm not making them breakfast, but they're welcome to park there. I, we're back to additional public comment, have we any? Uh, our digital participants, other than Mr. Locker. If you're joining us via Zoom, you can unmute yourself if you'd like we'll to pick a day, good, right? No? Okay. Any additional commentary here from uh, the public in the room? I'd move to adjourn, sir. All right. Second. Thank you. <laughs> Adjournment <laughs> noted <laughs> by Gary told us him when he did that. He never <laughs> no. he pulled the <laughs> 15. Thank you all for coming. I mean, I'm happy that he was going to be willing.